I'm Julie Miller, and I have been a licensed massage therapist for 10 years, and I have owned my own business for that long also, um, which I feel very blessed in my field to have my own business. I'm also a quantum biofeedback therapist and a certified nutritionist. And for my body work, I focus mostly on the working with the body as a whole. So I tie in all of my knowledge that I've gotten in the last 10 years into my field, um, often amassed if I'm a deep tissue massage therapist, and I think that my field has moved way beyond that to um, making it almost hard to have a description of what type of therapist you are. So I would say that what I do is work with people from a whole person point of view and use the modalities that I've learned, such as visceral manipulation, cranial sacral therapy, and myofascial release to help people heal. My background for my education, I went to Sister Rosalind's School of Massage Therapy and then I started right away in my continuing education with cranial sacral therapy and structural work through um, orthopedic massage. And I didn't really feel like orthopedic massage was my calling. I, it definitely helped me look at the person and see where they were um, dysfunctional such as a forward hip or a shoulder that was hanging low or um, tight jaw because their head's forward. But I felt that most people's issues were at a more intrinsic level than an external level. And so I continued my um, cranial sacral therapy work and then I was introduced to visceral manipulation and myofascial release, which I felt was my true passion in this field because it looked at the whole body as being a fluid being and that to have complete function you needed to be fluid in all areas of your body. And that is what I've continued my education in. And right now I'm working on getting my certification for visceral manipulation, which is organ work. But the organs affect all aspects of the body. When I was 25, my mom had breast cancer again for the second time. And she had started going to more alternative therapies. And I, she was going to a um, naturopathic doctor. And she was also getting massages. And at that time I was bartending and these girls used to come in from Sister Oslin's school and they would come in with their boyfriends and they would work on their hands. And so it was just intriguing to me because I knew nothing about any of that, just that my mom was really sick and she was getting help from a massage therapist. And so she encouraged me to go into massage therapy and I really had no idea what I was going into. I just um, remember being really scared to start school for it, but I didn't have any idea what journey it would open for me or that it was my calling in life, but from the second I walked into the school, it opened something in me and it's my passion in life. And I feel very blessed through my mom that I discovered the journey of helping people facilitate their healing and um, I feel that I'm in a position where every day people come to see me because they want to come see me. <laughs> and when I listen to what they deal with, I feel very blessed. I believe that health and wellness is a journey. I don't think it's a place that we get to in life where we're just like, oh yeah, I'm healthy and I'm well. I believe that in life we're going through things up and down emotionally and um, we have so many changes from the time we are born until we leave home and whether you go to college or you start working right away to then when you get married or you start a journey of your own without someone or you have kids it's just we are constantly being put with stress in our life and so to me your health and wellness is something that you're in control of and it's part of being disciplined in yourself to achieve the path to, wellness, to the path to wellness throughout your entire life. And I think that, I can only speak for America because it's where I live, that we have gotten very far away from being disciplined in ourselves and taking responsibility of our wellness and we've put it on other people. And I think it's overwhelming the medical field because we have no self-responsibility. And so if I can empower people to take control of their wellness and know that it's their job, their journey for their entire life, I feel that I have given something good to this world. 
Cranial sacral therapy is um, a modality that works with our cerebral spinal fluid that's contained in a duramater. And the duramater is a um, membranous tube, which it's, it's actually a fascial tube, and I'll talk about fascial, what fascia is in a little bit. But it, um, it contains our cerebral spinal fluid, and that is when in a healthy individual, it is pumping up and down this system in a fluid motion continuously and there's a cycle to it and um, you can actually count the hydraulic motion of pumping up and down in the body. What happens with people, let's say someone that's in a car accident that gets whiplash, they form a restriction in that dural tube and whether that affects the skull or the sacrum or the nervous system, it seems to cause problems in an individual where they might feel more tired after the whiplash incident or they start to get headaches or they start to feel dizzy or they um, have pain in areas in their body that they're told weren't affected by the whiplash. And so with cranial sacral, you're using just a really light touch, um, we're told, about the pressure of a nickel to, of that weight um, to feel where the restrictions are in the body. I can be at the feet and still feel the pumping of the system. I can be at the head and feel the pumping of the system. And you can feel where there are restrictions and where you might need to go to open up the dural tube again. Once um, somebody comes in for a cranial sacral, you can start with the 10-step protocol, which is what we're taught in the beginning, but as you grow in your practice, you'll start to feel when you need to use certain um, things such as, let's say, somebody comes in they're not breathing very well, you could do a release of their diaphragms, which are affected by the cranial sacral system. Or if they do have whiplash, you could possibly go inside their mouth and um, work on their vomer bone because there's a, a split in that that can be shearing on itself from that whiplash and the dural tube runs all the way into there and attaches. So there's many things that you can use cranial sacral for, and again, it's just part of a whole body approach to working with people. Myofascial release is, um, I, I have to mention that I've learned my myofascial release for, through John Barnes, because fascia is a big word right now in the um, osteopathic world and in the physical therapy world, kind of just everywhere. They used to think that fascia was just nothing. Even on a lot of cadavers, they would just take the fascia off. And in a lot of anatomy texts, they have no fascia. But now we're learning that fascia is actually one of the most important things you can work with is a ground like a starting point for um, helping people with dysfunction in their body. And fascia is um, like a tensegrity system where it, it needs to move together. If there's a part that this, that's dysfunctioning, when it moves, it pulls everything to that dysfunction. And so it's um, like if you had a sweater that was knitted and there was a piece of yarn that was starting to come apart, if you pulled on that, it would pull the whole sweater that way. And that's what's happen what happens when there's a restriction in fascia. And so with the myofascial that I've learned, we um, go into the fascia by putting our hands on a body part, so let's say the thigh, and we feel a restriction there, and we we hold, we put a tiny stretch, a small stretch in and we hold and we wait until we sink in farther and farther and farther. And then you'll start to feel a pumping, like there's fluid all of a sudden coming to the spot, which I'll back up. When you feel a restriction, it's usually an unfluid movement in the body that you can feel. And it's very um, easy to feel. It's, it's not something that's like you'd have to be really skilled to feel. And when you feel the fluidity come back into it, you'll feel this melting. And my clients will feel the melting too. And sometimes, let's say I am doing a release on the thigh, they'll feel something release in their ear. Because like I said, everything's attached in this, this system. And so it's, the reason they're feeling it in their ear is because maybe something up here was what was causing this tension here. And that's why I, I don't believe anymore that you can just look at a forward hip in someone and think it's just the hip because the whole body is functioning together so when it goes into dysfunction it dysfunctions all together. Um, so with the fascia I have to say that that was where 
I feel, all of a sudden it was like my whole world opened up for what I could do with body work and helping people. Visceral manipulation, also called um, visceral somatic feedback loop, is how you could look at it too. Um, it's working with the organs, but even with, when you're working with the organs, you're working with the whole body because it's a fascial system also. Everything is contained in fascia, everything. Even cells have a fascial system. So the, the first thing you'll feel when you're working with an organ is the fascia of it, but then you can actually sink into, let's say, a liver and feel how a liver is moving. And with visceral, we learn mobility for movement and we learn motility for movement. And motility, I will talk about first, is the embryological movement that we, that is created from the second that organ's formed. So as soon as your brain's formed in the womb and as soon as your liver's formed, they start to have a motility of movement. And then that motility works with the other organs that are being formed. And so that's what the goal is of Working with the organs is to bring back the natural motility to all of them because they're in this tiny space trying to move. <laughs> and then the mobility is how the organ moves with connective tissue. And so if the liver is stuck, let's say, up into the right, that's going to pull on a lot of things. So an example of a dysfunction that an organ will cause is a liver will cause right shoulder to be immobile. So people come in and they have a frozen shoulder, I could just work on the shoulder, but there's so much more that could be affecting that, and one of the things that could be affecting a frozen shoulder on the right side is the liver. And so I think that's really cool because people will say, oh my gosh, my shoulder is better and all you did was touch my liver, you didn't even touch my shoulder. So it's, it's really cool, it doesn't always work like that, but sometimes it does. Um, so. With visceral manipulation, I'm also learning how to listen in the body. And if you don't learn how to listen to the body, it's like a guessing game all the time. Like, I can look at someone's structure and I can look at where their bones are off, but I don't necessarily know what's causing that. And so with visceral manipulation and the listening technique, I can start to learn where to go in the body. So the liver might tell me, you know, I do have a problem, but it's actually over here and it'll move my hand let's say towards the midline of the body so I know that there's something else going on that's not just the liver and it, it's amazing because you can pinpoint almost where some things are happening in the body and one thing that we learn is that the body always hugs a lesion so for example if you have whiplash something that's really affected by whiplash is the small intestine and it, that always blows people away because the small intestine is right here and whiplash usually occurs in the neck. But the small intestine, what it's attached to for the, um, the posterior wall gets overstretched in whiplash because it comes forward and then goes back. And so if, if I do feel a pull towards the midline, that could be an example of where a lesion is being hugged. The person that I'm learning my visceral manipulation through is um, Jean Paul, or, sorry, Jean Burrow. And um, he has done, with his colleagues, over 200,000 case studies. And what they have discovered, he is an osteopath, um, he's from France, but he works closely with osteopaths here also. But what they have discovered is that um, the visceral somatic feedback loop has been called the missing link in neuromuscular, um, neuromuscular skeletal dysfunction in nine out of ten cases. And so what that means is when someone is presenting with symptoms of something that chiropractic, massage, PT, um, medicine is not helping, nine out of ten times it's a visceral problem. So that's pretty exciting for people that um, have had dysfunction for years that they can't fix, mm -hmm. and then to realize that it was the small intestine, let's say, is it's so helpful for people. A typical session, I get this phone call a lot about what it is that I do. So I'll get a phone call and people, the other person on the phone will say, what do you do? And 
I really have a hard time with this question because nobody is the same that comes in here. I do still have some clients that just want relaxation and so that's easy to describe. You come in, you lay down in a dark room and you like have your full body worked on and um, you're under a sheet and it's just nice to use lotion and it's relaxing. But everybody is different that comes in with dysfunction and so five people could come in with TMJ problems and I could work on them all differently. What I would say in a typical session is first I listen to what the what they're telling me their issue is because I don't want to form an opinion of what their issue is because I'll be wrong all the time. I also try to find out what's going on in their lives emotionally, um, what kind of stress they have. People tell me they don't have stress, but then two sessions later they'll tell me they hate their job. So if I treated everybody's TMJ the same based on that they grind their teeth, I could be missing something huge such as hating their job because there's way more involved than just grinding your teeth when you have an emotion like that. Or they'll tell me, somebody will come in and they'll say that they have um, the TMJ again, we're going to just stick with that one, and I'll ask them, some, like I'll say, do you have full range of motion, do you feel, and they'll say, yeah, and so then I will check range of motion, so I'll notice that they can't turn their neck farther than this, and so I guess a typical session starts out with listening at many levels, and then feeling the body in different ways, and then going from there, so I don't, I just still can't answer that there's a typical <laughs> session for anything that I do. I also said that I'm a biofeedback therapist and as, um, I also am a certified nutritionist through Venice Nutrition. And so what I've learned throughout all my years of working with people is that you, you want to have specific things that you're using in your business. If you have 20 modalities, that's just too much. But I feel like what I've drawn in for my education and knowledge and wisdom to help people all work together. So I feel that there's no other way to work with facilitation of healing than to use a holistic approach, which means a whole body approach. And so when I talk about the body work I do and then I tie in biofeedback and nutrition, I'm just going to use an example of when someone overeats, what can happen and I believe this happens almost every time someone overheats. Especially if there's a problem of overeating all the time and eating the wrong things. So let's say uh, an obese person. There's always an emotional component, component to overeating. So I can use biofeedback or visceral or fascia to figure out what that um, emotional component is. And I, I feel like a lot of times people don't even know at a conscious level what their emotions are or why they're doing things that they do. And so I feel if they or I come in with a bias of what the emotion is, that we're not going to get to the root of it. So I think through the journey that I said before to healing, that the things that I do help that person get there. So biofeedback, um, I'll just give a quick description of it, is a um, electrophysiological feedback loop that works from the person in through this computer program and it's a loop that um, continuously goes back and forth and so it come it picks up unconscious ha patterns that the person might not be aware of but once you say them and they think about them they're aware of them so it uses neuro-linguistic programming and um, to help people have an awareness of what's going on because I heard the inventor of my biofeedback device say that denial is the greatest um, disease of humanity and awareness is the cure. And so I feel that with the example I'm using, with all the modalities I have and helping people go in, into themselves, they're learning to heal themselves. So. When someone overeats, so we talk about the emotional component, and then right away when you overeat, there's a hormonal imbalance. And then you have filled your stomach past the level of what it can handle, so you've stretched out your stomach, which causes problems with the motility and the mobility. And your stomach hangs from your diaphragm, which then 
pulls on the diaphragm or pushes the diaphragm up and so it starts to get restricted then it, that affects your heart which affects your lungs so then your breathing will be off and so a lot of people will experience being tired after they've overeaten and but then they can't sleep but it's because you have all this dysfunction starting and so then because the hormones are off the emotions are off it's just this whole circle of dysfunction and I feel that you can take this overeating, you could take um, being angry at your boss, you could take um, not being able to sleep, and you have a circle of dysfunction that's created because everything is connected. So I feel that any modality I use, or if I combine a couple modalities, or even if someone's seeing me and someone else, that that's all working to help the person heal as a whole. Because if you miss something, then you might not ever get to the right issue. And if you don't get to the right issue, you can't heal. What people are noticing is that inflammation is the main cause of disease. So toxicity in your body, which we all experience toxicity now. It's impossible not to. We have toxins from food. We have toxins from air, from water, from how things are made. Toxins are everywhere. That's a huge part of inflammation, which in turn is why we need such good nutrition in our lives because the more nutrition, whole food nutrition that you get, the more antioxidants you have in your body to fight off all those toxins that create free radicals. So um, everything I do helps with detoxing you. So if you work with me for nutrition, I can teach you how to eat better. If you work with me for any of the modalities that I talked mainly about, they help you detoxify because it creates fluidity in your body so that your body can detox. For example, the liver is your biggest detox organ besides your skin, and you do not want to <laughs> detox through your skin. So when people are getting rashes and stuff, that's their body or detoxing through the skin. So, for example, biofeedback with the measurement of, of the... Um, physiological system, what it's working with is testing the moisture levels of the skin. The more moisture, the more toxicity, and so, or the more stress. So if your skin is not like sweat moisture, but if you have a lot of moisture on your skin, you're probably detoxing through your skin, which means your organs are full, because one of the organs' jobs is to flush your system. So everything I do works with detoxing. Um, also, emotions cause the dysfunction in your body because they freeze things. So for example, um, I use the liver a lot because it's such a powerful organ. Anger really affects the liver. Grief affects the pancreas. They've seen cases of people that go through some really deep grief and all of a sudden they've got diabetes. And so emotions are definitely under talked about in how they affect us. And they're really the root cause usually. And um, even if you break your leg, I mean, nobody wants to break their leg, but sometimes it could just be something that was really needed to slow down. <laughs> Not that you need to go break your leg to slow down, but you know, there's always good things that come out of the bad things and vice versa. But I think that when we have the awareness of, wow, my life was crazy and then this happened and I kind of realized that I don't want my life to be like that anymore. So I think emotion is a rut, rut, rut cause of many, many things and the modalities that I use can help you get to that. And it's not something I even have to know. Like people don't have to share that they hate the world with me or that they don't want to be in their marriage or that they have grief, but it's something they need to go figure out. I would say that the majority of people come in for pain into my field because that's what my field's known for. Um, and so most people come in because they have tension in their neck tension in their shoulders or low back pain. And I see a lot of people with with pain in their feet too. And I I really believe that everything I do works together. I I don't think one overpowers the other, but I do think that the everything starts with fascia. So even if I use um like soft tissue release, which is like deep tissue, I only use that to open up the fascia. And then cranial sacral and visceral manipulation are both working with the fascia. So that is something that I use in every session. 
every person and it's what gets the best results. I do have an example though of um, what you do feel in the body and it just happened with a client yesterday. She came in and she had a really, really tight pectoralis muscle and it was almost as if it was just this thick band holding her shoulder inward towards her sternum. And at first I tried myofascial release on it in that wasn't doing anything and so I am learning a new kind of Reiki. I'm actually certified in Usai Reiki but I'm learning Jikadin Reiki right now and so I just got that that was something that was going to help her more than the myofascial right then and so I did that in this area and then I put my hands underneath her back and just held and waited for those five levels of toxicity that we can feel for with Jikadin Reiki and I felt just the whole body start to relax and um, and we didn't talk about it at all but when she came out from her session she said that when I put my hands under her back that she felt as if for the first time in weeks that she was supported and that she felt that she could just let her shoulders go and so I don't I think there's just one modality that I could say will ever work fully because I would, I would love to say that fascia is the like, best and most amazing thing to work with, but the Reiki was so amazing for that session. I think that you could get what you needed from one session. I think that you might need many sessions. I think that you might need a session with me and a session with someone else or, or um, because there's, there's tons of amazing facil facilitators of healing out there. And I definitely refer out to different ones such as acupuncture or I have a friend that does body talk or um, counseling might be needed so I can't really define a set amount of sessions that anybody needs but I think that you've started your healing journey the first time you reach out to alternative healing and I believe that as I said in a previous question that it's a journey and you never get to a set point that you are always on a journey of balance. And so some people just come and see me once because they had a headache and they never had a headache again, so they don't come back, or they just come when they have a headache. And some people see me consistently once a month just because it's maintenance for them and they're on that journey. Um, if it was something, let's say, like a frozen shoulder, I really, there's no timeline I could put on that because it depends on what's causing the frozen shoulder. It depends on what they're willing to put into the session and what their what what works. So I I don't really have a timeline of how long a session could be. I think that everybody needs body work. I think it's amazing that I get paid to do what I do, but I also think that it should be something that's available to everybody. And I think that some of the places that are opening as chains and offering just relaxation massage at a cheaper rate are great for that. But I think the deeper healing is something that everybody in at least America is looking for and needs for us to heal ourselves and humanity because we obviously have some major problems <laughs> going on with the world and all the wars and crimes and stuff that we see right now and I believe that body work is a step towards healing that along with meditation and um, yoga and anything out there that's creating healing in you.